Y'all already know it's your boy Gio, man. Just gotta give y'all some information today, man, on what's been going on. Man, they said that your boy, little baby, he had a business partner, man, named Chad Dillon. Uh, they were the first to open up a restaurant in Atlanta that was a seafood boil. And um, they say he's been giving back to the community. He's been helping people get businesses set. Um, this dude's not had no known enemies whatsoever. Uh, he's just been an all-around great person, you know. Um, they said that he he passed away um, and uh, in front of the restaurant. Um, that's terrible, you know, when, when you do good things like that and, um, you know, you get that in return, you know, and it's like, you know, some people wonder when a lot of celebrities make it big, why they leave the city, why they don't support the city and things as such. Um, it's things like that that take place, you know, when you're doing good. Uh, they say he ain't have no known enemies. He was just really doing this thing, you know, um, business partner with little baby, you know, um, and it's sad, you know, my condolences out to his family and everyone, uh, that, that's, that knows him and as well as little baby, you know, um, it's a sad situation that's been going on with all of this, this, this crazy stuff, man, it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Um, they said that speculations, uh, I'm gonna say allegedly, oh yeah, it's a sacrifice or, Things like that for little baby, you know, because of the industry and stuff like that. But you don't know. Um, we, when we find out, we'll get more information. And, you know, I'm going to let y'all know about it. Um, I just had to let y'all know about what was going on. Um, I heard nothing but great things about him and um, him, you know, really bringing out something great in the city. You know, uh, they said it was a whole bunch of chicken spots that was around, but no seafood. He was bringing something different. You know, he was giving them some great food, man, you know. And in return, he gets this for looking out for the city as well, giving people jobs and things and such, man, helping them out. Uh, I heard he was giving out cash money, you know, to help them get their businesses off the ground and started and whatnot, man. And it's just a sad thing to see. I know little baby got enemies. Everybody, you know, in the industry almost got somebody that don't like him for whatever reason. And I guess he's affiliated to little baby, so that could be a reason for it um you know they had a little baby uh video shoot get shot up not long ago you know so i guess by him being tied to that and people knowing you know they can't get their little baby they may want to get to him and you know how these guys do man <clears throat> sad situation man you know and that guy probably ain't had nothing to do with nothing you know just trying to do business man and, and make a living you know so i got some clips that i want y'all to check out man and uh Y'all stay tuned for the updates, man. I'm I'm just sorry to be hearing all this crazy stuff that's been going on, man. I told y'all, summertime hit, it's going to be crazy, you know, and this is what's going on. So I got to show y'all this clip. Y'all stay tuned to it. Like, check this out. Leave the feedback. Leave the feedback. Comments. Subscribe. Make sure y'all all subscribe, man. Do me that favor and subscribe, man. When I get the channel a certain point, I'm gonna be giving out a lot of giveaways, merchandise, a lot of stuff, man. It's gonna be it's gonna be turned up, man. It's gonna be really turned up, man. Y'all stay tuned. I gotta show y'all this stuff right now. So originally this was called the menu, and he had it for about two years. And then he wanted something to spice up the community, something that was needed in the community. So then we came with the idea to do seafood. Cause there's about eight chicken restaurants around the area and it was zero seafood, so we figured Let's do seafood in the heart of the city, the heart of where he's from, his hometown, and it was going to do great. And as expected, the whole city came out today. It was an amazing turnout. A lot of people getting their seafood, and everybody's loving it. So how did you meet Lil Baby? Through a mutual friend, uh, Ian Connor. He's actually a fashion designer. He introduced both of us, and uh, he's a good friend of both of us, so he introduced us. He you know, I was good at seafood. He knows Lil Baby wanted to get some new businesses and new ventures, and uh, he connected us. So what else do you do outside of, you know, the restaurants? Like, is this your main job? Yeah, so I own three restaurants right now, and I'm building four more. But on my free time, I do have a foundation called the VO Foundation, where I go inside prisons and I teach uh, inmates business and how to start a business plan and how to get funding for their businesses. 
very successful ideas that uh, very positive that happened. So yeah, I'm just proud of y'all. Right. And just know that every idea is the same process. You can't skip it. My kids are sitting right there. They all got ideas. Ask them what I asked them for. Okay. What I asked you for, John? Business plan. If you ain't got a business plan, I can't invest. This is my son. Because what, what am I investing in? Mm -hmm. I don't know. You got to explain that to me. If you go to any bank, any lender, any anywhere else, they're going to ask you for the same thing. Yeah, because your dad, I don't, that don't mean I'm just going to pull my money out. I don't work hard for this. Because this, this money I have to take care of y'all. Mm -hmm. So how do we flip that back? It goes back to generational wealth again. Right? If I don't teach them, they can't teach their kids. You know? I was in this situation. Actually, I thought I was going to be speaking to a lot of kids. That's why I wanted them to be out here. But I'm actually better than it was y'all. Because it was decisions that y'all made that got y'all here that y'all have to now reverse those decisions to kind of make it better, right? But I always told them, every situation and every decision you make is always going to cure you or bring you closer to whatever your purpose is. Don't ever look at this like you made a mistake. Yeah, you might have made a bad decision or was considered to be bad, but who's to say it was bad? Maybe you had to go through this process to, to secure or to, you know, to, to actually fulfill your purpose. Some of y'all wasn't here when, we, when I first had the conversation, but my grandfather told me something super important. He said, and this never, and it never went away from me, he said, life is like a hotel room. We are just passing through. Hmm. And what he meant by that was, this life that we cherish and are afraid to leave is only a test for the next life that we're about to walk into. God has put us in a situation to change, not only change our life for the people watching, but to change it for ourselves for his confession when that day come. My pops was a super wise man, he's still alive. My grandparents was even wiser than him. So when I make the moves I make today, it was because of all the things they might have told me. So it's nothing that you can do in life that's going to that you can hide. There's nothing that you can do in life that only you know about. When they say God knows all, your body parts is going to confess against you on the day of judgment. Those eyes is going to tell God everything that you saw. Those ears is going to tell God everything that you heard. Them hands is going to tell God everything that you touched. Those feet is going to tell God everything that you, everywhere that you've been in your life. That skin, listen, Everything that's on you, God don't have to be there. It's going to testify against you on the day of judgment. Being raised in Africa taught me differently from a standpoint of being spiritual. And I never moved, even when I got locked up. At first, I thought about it. I said, man, you know what? This is a blessing because that actually changed my life. That became the turning point of who you see today. The nigga before me. <laughs> Yo. I was off the chain. Like, I had to sit down. Because I probably wouldn't have been allowed to tell the story. You know what I'm saying? But what it did, it made me understand, man, my purpose is so much greater. I had to go through this process to even see that I even had a purpose. Mm -hmm. The purpose ain't to ball out, be rich and famous, and everybody, everybody screaming your name. Nah. The only reason why he made me popular is because I had a voice, and he gave me the common sense to be able to preach in a way that I could reach more people than being a normal person. I just happened to be a cool nigga that everybody liked. And when I spoke, people listened. So he magnified it. I became an artist to become somebody that can even help Africa at this point. I'm, I'm, I'm walking in rooms I never thought I'd ever even be able to walk into, sitting with presidents of all different countries, and I'm sitting here like, I can't believe a moment ago I was still in cars, and today I'm buying them niggas cars as gifts. You, you understand what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. life is so unexpected on where and where it takes you. So don't ever look at what you're doing or where you at as an issue or even look at it as it was a mistake made. It was a decision that you actually had to make to understand where and who you are to be able to, you know, to, to, to actually fulfill whatever that purpose you have on this earth. So all this information you're getting, if, you never know. You probably went all through that process just to get this information right here. You never know. Every, we all meet each other for a reason. We all, you know, everybody's, it's like me and Chad didn't connect by mistake. 
Man, this nigga finish each other's sentences. We ain't even know each other. Like, I, I have an idea. He's like, man, I'm doing that right now. And vice versa. When he called me about this, I didn't even hesitate twice. I just was, the question was whether or not I was gonna make it in town in time to see it. It just so happened that God allowed me to be home last night to be here for it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So don't, don't, don't feel sorry for anything that you've done. Maybe remorseful. Very remorseful because sometimes we make decisions out of survival. Half the things that we do, we don't do because we want to do it. We just that's when we don't have no other choice but to do that at that moment. We just pray that we we come out of it. You understand what I'm saying? So ultimately, sometimes though the resistance is the freedom. Don't think that nothing in life is gonna come to you that's just easy. If it came easy, it wasn't meant for you. If it came easy, it's a trap. God don't put nothing in front of you that's worth having that he don't put a challenge before. If it ain't no challenge coming for it, don't even waste your time. You don't want to go into anything that you ain't out of, that you don't have to work hard for because it's not coming from God. That's the devil tricking you. Waving the carrot. If it's too good to be true, nigga, it's too good to be true. Trust me, walk away from it. But if it's like it's going to be a challenge, man, I got to go through all this to get there, that's the one that's worth going for. Because you've got to go through that process to get the reward in the end. And he does that to test your faith. He does that to test your loyalty. And more than anything, he wants you to be appreciative when you do finally receive it. Because that appreciation is what's going to push you forward to inspire other people to do the same thing. So trust me, you're where you're supposed to be. And where you're headed is all on you. You know what I'm saying? Patrick, thank you. Tonight, a business owner gunned down in the same exact community where he's known for doing so much good. Someone shot Chad Dillon right in front of his new restaurant, the city's old fourth ward. Atlanta News first anchor Tori Cooper is there tonight. Tori, you've been talking with his friends, with his attorney. Still, no arrests. No arrest tonight, Sean. His friends and his attorneys say that he was here at his dipped in butter restaurant here along John Wesley Dobbs Avenue this evening. This restaurant was set to open next month, but this evening he went around the corner and that's when he was met with gunfire right outside of his car. That's where he was shot and killed. Now police are calling this a targeted attack. His friends, family members, and his attorney are devastated by what happened. Chad Dillon was 33 years old, and he was best known for his Boiler Seafood Atlanta restaurant that opened back in 2020, achieving massive success. Dillon was also one to give back to the community. Atlanta News First even interviewed him two years ago when he donated $15,000 of his own money to ex-offenders at the Atlanta Reentry Prison to help aspiring restaurant owners create their own business when they left prison. Some of these guys are really good guys that made one mistake. These people still have skills, they still have talent, they still have a lot of knowledge, and they're still creatives. And we don't want to forget about our creatives. Well, Dylan also helped teach ex-offenders life, business, and social skills so that they would be set up for success once leaving prison. Tonight, we still don't have any information on funeral plans, and police have not released any information as it relates to any suspects arrested. If we get any new information, we'll certainly share it with you right here on Atlanta News First. Reporting live in Northeast Atlanta tonight, I'm Tori Cooper. A murder in broad daylight on John Wesley Dobbs Avenue in downtown Atlanta at the intersection of Boulevard. Around 345 this afternoon, Zone 6 responded to the 400 block of John Wesley Dobbs on a person shot. Cops found the 33-year-old man lying feet from a black Rolls Royce in critical condition. Upon their arrival, they located a black male in his mid-30s, suffering from gunshot wounds. Um, that male was pronounced a cease on scene. APD Homicide Commander Andrew Smith says officers on scene tried to resuscitate the man. Into the evening, investigators scoured the area in front of the Rolls Royce near a hair salon. Some of those who knew the victim gathered at the scene in disbelief. Neighbors who watched the shooting happen shared what they saw with investigators. We have talked with witnesses at this time. Fox 5 is working to confirm the victim's identity. APD did seem certain, though, that the shooter intended to kill him. This appears to be uh, a targeted incident. Uh, this isn't random, so I would not characterize it as uh, a dangerous place.